welcome to um, Let's Talk About It. We're going to talk um, today about um, MS, relationships, and communication. Um, for, um, for those of you that um, do not know me, we'll move on to the next slide. Um, we, uh, before we get started, I want to thank um, Bristol Myers Squibb for their um, sponsorship of um, the MS Mental Wellness um, chat series. Um, we are so um, indebted to them and then also MS Views and News for um, allowing this um, platform and this program. So thank you to um, Bristol Myers Squibb for um, their sponsorship for tonight's program. Um, we um, greatly appreciate it because we have learned that the MS Mental Wellness Chat is a really important program for everyone. So um, before we get started, um, I um, want to introduce myself. If I, um, um, if you have not met me before, my name is Jessica Thomas. I am a um, licensed clinical social worker, and I um, help people that are living with um, neurological disease. And so I've been doing this for um, about, say probably about 16 years almost. Um, and then um, I have been living with MS myself um, for about almost 17 years. And, um, and so um, a little bit about me. I, um, I definitely got into this work after my own diagnosis. I didn't have a counselor that specialized in um, neurological disease and I wanted to be able to help others because I knew I needed that help when I was first diagnosed. So um, before we get started, um, a couple um, things to, to just um, remind you is that we, um, this is not a counseling session, but I will um, be definitely um, looking and, and talking to you guys um, through the question box. I'm trying to move the question box as we're speaking. I'll have to pull it up in a second. Um, but this is not a counseling session. So um, if you have any individual needs um, or if there's anything that we identify, I might, you know, refer you to, you know, talk to your um, primary care doctor, your MS specialist, or um, I can, you know, maybe help guide you to, to find a counselor. Um, also that this is being um, recorded. So if, um, if I go through um, a resource or something and, um, and you feel like I spoke too fast or you couldn't write it fast enough, um, do know that this ends up on the MS um, Views and News um, YouTube channel. So, and that usually is posted in about a week. And then the, the last thing is, um, I call it the chat box connect, but it's really the question box. Um, I, um, we use that in this um, format because it's really helpful for people to connect. Now, while um, you're not able to see what everybody writes, I can. And so I, um, I ask questions and then I will um, do a very good job at um, making sure that we're connecting. So we're gonna talk a little bit about um, MS, uh, relationships, communication and MS. And really, um, healthy de um, relationships depend on good communication, mutual respect, trust, and, um, and a sh really a shared um, concern for each other's welfare. And MS can definitely challenge um, some of even the closest of relationships in a variety of ways. So um, a couple of the reasons is that MS can be, um, you know, it isn't easy for people to, to really be able to um, understand sometimes if you don't have it. Um, and it can be uh, kind of complicated and hard to explain at times. Um, it, you know, it requires a lot of um, shifting and pivoting as I've, I've talked about in the past. And, um, and sometimes the unpredictability of the disease um, can make it harder um, for people that have relationships. Um, so even social relationships. So if you, um, you know, if you need to cancel because of fatigue, et cetera. It can, so it can make it a little bit tougher sometimes to navigate some relationships. And then MS can strain, you know, resources, including finances, time and energy um, and emotions. Um, so we're going to talk about effective communication and how this is really a big key and to help you manage some of these um, changes and challenges with MS. And um, so I hope that tonight that you can um, that you can come on with an open mind um, and um, and and also that we'll be able to ask each other questions. I'll be able to read some of your responses um, and we can learn from each other because I know what I do as a person with MS and as a professional with MS. But I know that you guys probably have a lot of um, good tips as well. So. Um, we, you know, we all share information very differently about our MS, and it really depends on who we're connecting with. Um, 
there are so many different types of relationships that we have. You know, I think about um, the um, the colleagues that I have in my office and, and how much I might share about MS to them versus um, my um, my friends. And then, of course, versus my uh, my husband or even my uh, medical providers. So we have a lot of different types of relationships and different types of communication that um, that we may have um, with and different types of opportunities that we have to communicate with others. So I'm going to try to be very mindful this evening to make sure that we are um, we're addressing kind of a lot of the different pockets of, um, of communication because they're all a little bit different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can. OK, perfect, perfect. Um, pull up. I pulled up the question box again. I'm trying to get comfortable with this format. Um, it just looks a little bit different for me. So we're going to talk about um, communication and some of the basics of communication here. So um, the next slide we'll, we'll talk about. Um, so communication basics, um, keeping in mind that communication is a two way street. As uncomfortable as you may feel about expressing your feelings or asking for help, um, chances are others probably feel the same. And um, and that's one of the things I like about this mental um, wellness chat is that often people are very connected. They um, People have a lot of the same feelings that you're not alone. And so um, for communication basics, um, you know, we, one of the first things is not to assume that others should know because they should know. Because people aren't mind readers. If you um, if you want someone to know something, you need to tell them. And some of the things that I'll talk about will be slightly repetitive, but I think that um, it will be interesting enough um, and hopefully reinforcing too for um, for some tools. And another thing is you cannot can you know you really can't change the communication for others. Like I can't change the way my husband communicates. Um, I um, I can't even change the way he receives communication. Um, but what I can do is change how I communicate. Um, and and I can um, can definitely um, can work on making sure I'm as understood as best as possible. So the next slide you're going to see is this famous iceberg. Um, if you have been um, going to MS education programs, you've probably seen this iceberg um, a time or two. If you haven't, though, I'll explain it. So MS is so much like an iceberg in the sense that um, you have the very top of the iceberg. And that's the things that people see. And um, and below, though, the, is, is the iceberg is usually much bigger, much more dense. And um, and below is the things that people can't see. And so with MS, um, you know, sometimes we have symptoms that, that are visible. Um, for example, if we have mobility issues, that tends to be visible. Sometimes I have um, cognitive issues that can be visible. If I can't think of like a word or I'm struggling, um, with um, with coming up with um, something and I'm struggling, that's pretty visible. Some of my, one of my colleagues or my husband might know that um, that I'm struggling with that cognitive issue. But often a lot of the cognitive issue, issues that I might deal with are um, are really under the iceberg, but um, people don't really see them. But um, because MS has a lot of symptoms that are invisible, it can even make it very confusing. The the most supportive partner, the most um, the best friends that you have, or um, you know the people. The the oops, I'm sorry, that's really bright. I'm gonna move this the other way. Um, it's getting dark in here. That um, it ma can make the best people in your life really still not be able to um, to know what's going on with you. So that's where communication is super important because. A lot of MS is invisible, and um, and people will not know unless they know. So I want you to think about what does your iceberg look like. Um, we have, um, and, and we don't need to. Um, you don't need to do anything in the question box um, quite yet. But what does your iceberg look like in thinking about this emotionally and mentally? What can people see and what can people not see? Your um, MS symptoms on a physical level, what can people see? What can people not see? Um, how can you communicate what your iceberg looks like? And we're going to talk about this a little bit more in depth. 
But it's important to um, to kind of think and kind of figure out, you know, how can I communicate what's going on with me um, on a um, a physical level, on a feelings level, and an emotional level. How can others know so that way they can support me and and that way I feel understood in my MS journey. And so we're going to move on to the um, the next slide, and I'm going to try to get the question box where I can totally see it. Okay. So this is our first um, chat box slash question box um, connect. Who do you struggle with communicating your MS with? So who are people in your life? And again, we have lots of different relationships. Um, it might be, you know, um, our, our social relationships, our um, romantic relationships. Um, it, it, there's a lot of different people in our, our lives. Who are people that you struggle with um, with communicating with? And I I will get us started. Um, so I struggle sometimes communicating with people that don't really know me, and so um, that can um, that can be kind of tricky because they don't know me, and maybe I need to be very careful about not getting overheated. And um, so I might look kind of rude where I am trying to um, to be in front of a fan and it looks like I'm hogging it or something. And so I, I struggle sometimes with people that um, that I just don't know. Um, so we have some people here um, that, so um, we have, um, I'm going to say your names, but if you don't want me to repeat, um, just say, don't say my name. But we have someone here that says their boss, um, employees that rely on me. I struggle with most outside people. My husband understands though. Patricia said that. That's great. Um, Elizabeth said, people that don't see me often. Um, Boylan said, I have very good communication. Um, he's lucky. Um, and yes, you are lucky. He put lucky there. Um, Dion um, says, my biological family, my parents and my siblings. Um, Joyce said, people that I know by faith, but not personally. Like, so people like in the health club or something that's kind of similar to um, some of, um, of what I was even saying. Um, um, Maddie says, with someone who doesn't know me, Wanda says family um, that don't think I'm as bad off um, and friends that I don't see often because I look fine. So again, it's that invisible um, aspect. And then um, someone, you know, said their spouse. Um, we have someone, um, folks who, um, Maddie said, who don't know what the last um, couple years have been like. So um, so there's been a long period of time and, um, and you know, the they haven't seen him in a while. And then um, Sandy says, um, people who don't know I have it and some friends. So as you can see, um, and I'm sure this resonates with a lot of you, is that it can be very common to um, have people in your life or in your environment that you struggle with knowing how to communicate with in terms of your, um, your MS symptoms. And so um, we, um, Darlene says, when I meet someone um, at the club and who sees me walking with a cane, I don't know how to tell them. And then Rhonda, um, family and friends accused of being, um, tend to speak broken English since, um, since she's been trying to get to the point. And, um, and so it's, um, so you definitely can see that we, you know, there's a, this is a common theme is as people, um, we um, collectively can be challenged and struggle with how to communi communicate our symptoms with people that we don't know all the way to the people that we do know, the people that we live with in the same house and people that we grew up with. Um, so this is a common thing. Um, now, one question I'm going to ask you, um, and I think my, um, it may be a couple minutes before we get to the next slide, but I, um, I wanted to ask you another question. How do you communicate when you do not need something? So um, I know this sounds kind of like a little bit weird, like just a little bit weird of a question, but, um, but I think it's a, a good question to ask. So for, um, for some of you, um, if any of you have any um, visible issues um, or visible symptoms that, um, that people notice, how do you communicate to them when you don't need something? So say that um, you are using um, 
a, a walker and, and somebody wants to help or using a relator and somebody wants to help with something. Um, but, but you're doing it and you're doing fine at it um, and you're enjoying what you're doing and you don't need help. Um, how do you communicate with them about that? I thought that this was a fair balance question. Um, and, um, and the reason why is because that sometimes we don't need help. And, um, and so some of our visible symptoms may um, look like we're, um, we need help, but, um, but we actually don't. And I think that's important too. We need to be able to communicate, I'm good. So we have um, Patricia here that says, um, I state, no thanks, I'm good. That's perfect. Um, that, is, um, that is really good. Um, and um, we have Mary Lou says, I use a cane. I tell them, thank you, but I'm good for now. And um, Joe says, I'm good, thank you. And um, Joy said, that's a tough one. I simply say, I'm okay, I can do it. And we have Deborah um, that says, honesty is the best policy in this case. I, um, it's been uncomfortable for the person wanting to assist you and for yourself, but I've learned the person wanting to help appreciates my honesty when I decline the assistance. That is so true. And um, Deborah, thank you for sharing that. And then Jane said, good question, because they don't always believe me, and that's tough. Darlene says, when I'm walking, I ask people to walk on my left side, or, um, or I'll walk into you, so she lets them know what they need. Um, Renee says, I politely say, I'm good, thank you. Um, Wanda says, thank you, but I can do it. I love that, it's empowering. Um, Boylan says, lunch would be nice. So he's, um, and we'll get to that kind of communication too, kind of saying what you can't help with. Um, and um, and Elizabeth um, says, I appreciate your offer. However, I'm fine. Thank you. And so um, thank you so much for um, for responding to those, because I think that's important, too. We need to um, we, while we might have trouble communicating with um, people about our symptoms, sometimes we actually might have trouble communicating or we might need to find ways to communicate. I'm kind of good um, and I don't need help. So um, we're going to go on to the next slide real quick. Okay, what is the way, and I know we're doing a lot of talking and sharing here, and I've got resources too, trust me, but what is the way that you have learned to communicate your MS symptoms to um, someone important to you, so someone that is close to you? I have found, um, and I'll get us started while we get people um, typing in their responses, um, I have found um, that I have learned that one of the best ways to communicate to um, my husband, who's going to be the closest person to me, um, one of the most effective ways is that um, in real time, as I'm feeling things that I share. Um, so if I'm feeling very fatigued, um, that I, I share that during that time. Um, and because, it, because of that, and I've, I've had MS for so long, and I've had MS since we've been married, he can start to now kind of identify some of the um, either the triggers or um, he can definitely identify, um, oh, she is really fatigued. And so I think finding um, for me, like just in real time has been very helpful. Um, so we have some responses. Um, so Joe says, honestly, it's a, a great. Um, Mary Lou says, I'll let them know when I'm not feeling well and I may need help. Um, Maddie says, I'm very um, honest with my close friends. Um, Joyce is the same as me. I explain why I can't do something. Um, and then Renee, um, this is a great idea. She says, I invite them to an MS event. That is a really, um, really good suggestion. And um, that is a really good suggestion even for, um, that I will often recommend for People that have um, family members that don't understand or good friends and they can't seem to to find a way to connect to kind of share and talk about their symptoms by inviting them to an educational program. It really can be helpful because one, they get to interact with, you know, other um, care partners, et cetera. But um, but they get to see a lot of other people with MS, too, and they get information and education, which is great. Um, we Wanda says. Um, I let my husband know that I'm having a bad day or an off day. Also letting him know when I'm having a painful day. That's, that's really important. And then Erica says, I explained my spoons and how um, my symptoms change day to day. And Erica, we're going to be talking about the spoon theory here in a, um, before the program's over. So I'm glad that you brought that up because it's a really good resource. 
Um, and, and Eric also said, but I tell them it's not them and I'll be honest when things come up in the future. So, um, so it sounds like, you know, for um, a lot of people developing kind of like a strong trust and honesty with, um, with your close friends, with your um, spouses, et cetera. Um, and then um, Bruce says, how to explain why I'm not the same as you remember me? So I'm going to take that maybe as a question possibly, and we'll, um, and we're going to, um, we will talk about that a little bit or I'll, I'll visit that again. So we're going to move on to the, um, the next slide. What is a way that you have learned to communicate your MS symptoms to someone that you don't know well? So um, this is again a um, a opportunity to kind of share um, with each other. You know, what is the, what is the way that you've been able to communicate your symptoms um, to someone who doesn't know well? Um, and so I will get us started. Um, so um, for um, for someone who does not um, know me very well, one of the ways that I've been able to um, communicate uh, my symptoms um, is um, is fatigue. So fatigue is one of my main symptoms, and I've found that um, you know with um, with COVID, um, you know that that there's been a lot of fatigue um, that people get with COVID. So sometimes I explain that you know MS fatigue and that cognitive fatigue. Uh, feels like it can be somewhat similar. And so that's been a way that I've been able to um, explain fatigue to someone. Um, also, um, I would say um, the the cognitive piece I've been able to explain to someone I don't know that well um, is um, I've given them the example. It's kind of like when you take a nap and you've um, you've been shook out of your nap really quickly, and um, and your brain is not on yet, and you're um, you're trying to kind of wake up. But to me, that's a little bit how cognitive um, fog can feel like for me. So let's see if we've got anyone any responses. Um, Wanda says, for someone that doesn't understand, heat is not good for me, um, and like arthritis, heat depletes my energy. Um, so um, I tr and then Dion says, I try to be open, encourage questions, and I share that each person with MS is different. That is um, really great. Um, Erica says, I keep my symptoms to myself if I don't know someone well. Sometimes it's a lot to explain. I've also experienced a lot of what it feels like um, in terms of pity. So those responses like, oh, I'm so sorry. I mean, that's that's the worst, right? Um, you don't want um, people to, um, often we don't want people to, to say that they're sorry or, or feel pity for you when you just want to explain something. Um, and then uh, Maddie says, I cut um, to the chase and say, I'm, I'm very dizzy. And, and that probably is a great thing to do because if you are feeling dizzy, it might be a safety issue as well. And so, um, so if you are feeling dizzy, it's good to, you know, to let someone know as well. So we're going to um, move on to our next um, slide. And we're going to talk about um, common communication breakdowns, um, and we're going to relate this to um, to close relationships. So, um, sharing you know information about your MS um, with family members isn't always as easy or straightforward. Um, different family members um, want um, and need different um, kinds of information, and um, and so that that in itself can be a challenge, right? Um, um, some, you know, some family members might be able to keep some information private, some might not. So I'm, I'm talking about all sorts of different families, like your, your family that you live with and also extended family here. Um, and so, it, you know, it can be common that um, because you have to decipher what information you're going to give certain family members, um, it's, it's good to have a, um, a strategy of how, you know, how you communicate and what you communicate to, um, to your family members. Um, you know, as um, as you know, MS changes, you might need to to change um, the information that you provide. It's important to share how the disease impacts you, um, um, because it impacts everyone in such different ways. So it's um, it's a good idea for your family to have an idea, okay, um, a strategy of sorts of like this is you know my my close family. This is you know the the circle that needs to know. Um, some of the intimate details of my symptoms. Um, this is kind of more the extended family. Um, I, I'm comfortable with them knowing this much um, or not knowing this much, um, but kind of coming up with a, um, a plan um, because 
with close relationships, they can be kind of difficult to decide, well, how, how, how much information does everybody need to know? And, and so kind of, you know, deciding who is in your circle. And when I say family, I mean friends too. Um, we can, um, you know, friends can be the chosen family. So um, if, if you don't have a um, family, so to say, um, I want you to consider your friends your family and think about that from your circle. So we'll, we'll talk about, um, we'll go to our next slide. Um, having a strong foundation. When um, when a person has MS, it's important um, for you within your family or your friend, um, your close friend circle, to um, to share a sense um, a communication plan of sorts. Um, and so I'll, I'll give you an example. I um, I used to call this a circle of trust, and I um, and then I realized there was a movie um, called Meet the Parents, and he talks about circle of trust. So I don't use it that much um, in that sense. But, um, but for this, um, this idea of trust, um, what you, with a communication plan, it's, um, I'll give you an example of what I do with my own spouse. So um, we have a, a kind of a tight circle. And so I communicate if I'm having a symptom or if I'm having something that's going on or if I'm feeling distressed about my MS. And he, with that, I trust 100% that he's going to receive the information, he's going to understand it, and he is going to understand that that's my reality because he might not be able to see all of it. Now, in the meantime, he is not going to worry about my MS or um, or think I'm having symptoms if I'm not. Um, so it's, it's down to um, being very um, intentionally um, uh, you know, deliberate about our communication. So I'm not assuming anything. He's not assuming anything. So if he doesn't hear about me talking about symptoms, he's not. He's going to think I'm I'm not having symptoms because I'm not. Because if I'm I'm experiencing a lot more, I'll let him know. Um, we've got some people here, and um, so Joe said um, he um, he refers um, people to um, to see um, Dr. Boster on um, YouTube, which he is he is great. And, um, and Joe took his kids to an appointment with him. And that is a really, um, a really great thing to do. I, I've done that as well, too, when my son was younger. So, um, so thinking about with your close relationships, you have a, um, a strong foundation of communication, um, really for everything, but, um, but in particular for, um, for MS. Now, um, with healthy relationships, um, and mental health and communication. Um, relationships can be either um, strained, strengthened, um, or both. But it's important, and I've mentioned this before in um, previous um, programs, that um, MS never ruins relationships. People do. Um, and no matter with what you're coping with, um, it takes two people to maintain the bonds of a relationship. And this is true with friendships as well. Um, so it's important to know that while your MS may impact or um, create um, some, some challenges, it also creates op opportunities to learn how to communicate better and, and how to be strong together. Um, but MS does not ruin relationships, people do, and, and that's important. Um, next month, we're going to be talking a little bit more in depth about relationships with MS, but, um, but I thought that was good to talk about in response to um, having a strong foundation. So we're going to talk a little bit about communicating your symptoms. I want to move one more slide over. So... Um, so helping, one of the, I think, important things to do is to help your family members understand the invisible symptoms of MS. It's so much easier to understand problems and things that we see, that we can see, the things that are visible, the top of the iceberg, right? Um, it is so much harder um, for, um, for people to understand things they can't see, like um, fatigue or mood changes, um, cognitive problems. Um, so it, it's important to come up with a, a way, a strategy to, um, to communicate um, 
what um, what it feels like um, or what you're experiencing. I know um, for some people that can be kind of tough. I know that um, if we experience um, if you experience fatigue that um, is really bad and you have to cancel plans, it's really hard to explain um, you know your fatigue and how that feels. Um, but it, uh, it is helpful when we can find ways and find strategies to do that. So that way, um, that way we can um, be one more at peace that we are explaining what's going on, but um, also too that we can um, communicate because if um, our receivers don't see the symptom, they, they won't understand. But if um, we can communicate, that will definitely help. So I'm gonna go on to our next um, chat box and I'm gonna ask you a question. How do you communicate fatigue? Since fatigue is a very um, common um, symptom with MS, I, I'm wondering how you communicate it. So we, I just wanted to see um, if we could have some conversation around that. I will get um, started. So I, when my son was little, I used to communicate fatigue like it was like a, um, a, like a, a bank number. And I'd say, you have like $500 of energy and I have like $20 of energy in my bank account. And so that was one of the ways that I showed him um, or talked to him about fatigue um, because he could understand um, the high and the low numbers. And he could also understand that he had high energy and I had low energy. Um, so that was, um, was that. that was one thing that we did. So Maddie says, um, I have a hard time with that. Yeah, explaining fatigue can be kind of tricky. I, um, when I had, I've had a couple friends go through pregnancy as, and, um, and when that happened, that was really helpful because during the first trimester of pregnancy, usually people, um, um, women will have a severe amount of fatigue and, and that fatigue is, well, it's not the same as MS fatigue, it's pretty close. Um, I, I remember because I was pregnant at one point. And so I would say that's pretty close to how I feel almost every day. Um, so Darlene says, um, I, how do I know I'm being honest about limitations um, at fatigue and uh, just not an excuse? So I, I think it's important to kind of know, you know, um, you know your symptoms, you know how you're feeling. Um, and if we can learn to explain it and, and, and also the, with the people that support you and love you and, um, and care about you, then, um, then hopefully they'll be able to know that that's kind of what's going on with you and it's not just an excuse. Um, Rhonda says, my fatigue is shown by confusion. Um, I definitely can understand that too because my fatigue sometimes comes with cognitive stuff sometimes. Um, and we have um, Audrey that says, um, my partner keeps um, wanting to exercise um, and she doesn't relate to the fatigue issue. So um, that was probably a really good opportunity to um, to probably research MS and exercise um, and um, and do that you know together to to kind of see how fatigue plays into that and then how maybe exercise might be able to help fatigue but it's finding the right type of exercise at the right time. Jim says I use the tank of gas approach, um, a quarter tank, a half tank, etc. That's a really awesome um, example. And then Wanda says, I let my family know that I'm wiped out because they've seen me crash. But when others seem to compare it with um, when they are tired, they don't get the difference. Oh, my goodness gracious, Wanda. Like, I bet there's lots of people on here that really understand that. That is so frustrating, um, you know, when, um, when someone says, oh, I get tired. And you're thinking, no way. You don't get tired like I get tired. It's different. And then... Um, Elizabeth says, I say I hit a brick wall. That's a, a really clear example, too, and I think one that people can understand. And then Erica goes back to the, um, the spoon theory, um, which we'll talk about. And she, um, she says, I've chose, um, and she chooses where she spends her um, spoons. And that I found that the spoon theory is very helpful for, um, for people as well. And um, that's a, a great, um, great one. So we're going to move on to our, our next slide. And we're going to talk a little bit about communicating our feelings. OK, so this is important because um, I, this is so feelings and moods, mood changes. 
So um, problems with mood, including like irritability, depression, anxiety, um, can be um, you know difficult um, for people to understand because sometimes it's invisible and sometimes it's not invisible. Um, it's important for um, people that love and care about you to understand that, you know, sometimes mood changes can happen. I also, because of the disease, but then also um, sometimes I know if I am dealing a lot with fatigue, that, um, that I'm kind of grumpy a little bit. I'm kind of, you know, I'm not feeling as good as I normally would. So sometimes the symptoms can create, um, you know, some shifts in your moods as well. And so um, I wanted to pause here for a second because I, I think that this is such an important thing. And I'm so sorry, it's getting so dark in this room. And I'm trying to see how I can make it a little bit brighter. Um, it's, I'm in North Carolina, the sun just went down. Okay, so, um, so it's important to communicate your mood changes, but how do we do this, right? Um, I think having a, a very good baseline to let the people that love you and care about you know that sometimes mood changes happen. Um, but then also, this is a really important thing to talk about because often we um, we might experience changes in our mood or we might experience um, feelings of um, sadness. Um, we might be experiencing um, depression or anxiety that um, that is taking over um, more and changing some of our um, quality of, of our lives. Um, and um, and I want you to know that um, while that's a part of um, MS, sometimes um, mood changes can be very treatable. And so if you are experiencing any significant mood changes, um, if you are um, having any um, sadness that has been going on for a very long time, if um, if you are having um, absolutely have any thoughts or feelings of self harm um, or of not wanting to live, I want you to reach out to your um, to your healthcare provider, to your MS specialist. Um, there is a lot of counseling programs out there um, that can be helpful. Um, there was a program I did um, with MS Views and News not long ago called um, Home But Not Alone. And um, in there I mentioned some of the, um, the resources for mental health. Um, but if you are struggling with any mental health issues, I want you to know that one, you are not alone, but there are also resources there that can help you. Um, and so I'm gonna go to, um, we've got some responses here on mood. Um, I find, um, so Audrey says, I find that um, I bark more when my, um, my mood isn't good and I end up having to apologize, yeah. So um, you can see sometimes with mood changes, um, and mood affects MS a lot, um, that um, finding a way to communicate your feelings. And if you're noticing any, um, any significant mood changes, or if you're just noticing a lot of changes in your mood, um, I want you to talk to your healthcare provider as well as your family members. I know um, when I'm dealing a lot with fatigue, um, that you know, I'm grumpy, like I said, and, and, um, and so I talk with my husband about that as well. So the, the next um, slide we're going to go to is communicating your cognitive challenges. So again, this is another invisible symptom. Um, and um, it's, it can be a frustrating one. Um, and so the cognitive changes you know, that happen in MS can be really confusing to people because it's invisible some. Um, if, the, um, if the person with MS you know, has some memory problems or slowed thinking or um, it, you know, it, it can you know, kind of be difficult on the relationship. And so um, it's important to identify and be able to talk about when you're experiencing um, cognitive challenges. Um, I, um, I know for me that it's, um, it's important for me to, to be able to normalize it a little bit too. Um, I don't know if you would agree with me or not, but, um, but I try to um, normalize sometimes when I can't remember a word um, because if I, um, if I can't remember a word um, and I have it kind of like on the tip of my tongue, but I just can't think of it. Um, if I can say, you know, this just kind of happens sometimes with, um, with MS, then, um, then it takes some of the pressure and stress off of it. And, um, and it helps me um, sometimes to be able to come up with a word, but it also helps me to not feel guilty and, and bad that I cannot um, come up with a word, if that makes sense. And so for um, communicating um, cognitive challenges, um, it's important, you know, for you to, to be able to, for the people in your, um, your circle that you really trust, you know, I um, do a lot of these education programs. So I think I'm a little bit more open about some of the cognitive challenges that I might experience here and there. 
um, because I, I want to model talking about it. But in my everyday world, I'm not talking about cognitive challenges all the time. Um, and so I understand for some it's a kind of a private thing, um, but it's important for the people that you know to um, to be able to to know that when you're dealing with cognitive challenges, because often the cognitive challenges can come because of um, you know that we're we're more fatigued or maybe we're more stressed um, or um, or we're just dealing with the cognitive challenges. But our um, our loved ones need to know. So we're going to talk a little bit about, um, if you go two slides over, um, to managing when days are different. And um, this is important too because MS has, um, you know, for a lot of us, we have good days and we have bad days. So I have days that I'm really on, and I have days that I'm kind of off. And um, and it's important for um, people in our circle to know um, that um, that we have days like that if you experience um, days that are good and then days that are bad. Um, so that way they can understand that, you know, sometimes MS is a little bit unpredictable. And, and, and while it's unpredictable, um, it's important to be able to, um, to enjoy the, um, you know, the good days. And it's, um, it's also important to have the support on the bad days as well. So um, it's helpful for them to know sometimes that um, people that are in your circle that um, sometimes you need, um, you might need more help and assistance, um, and you'll communicate that on those days. Um, and then some days are better than others, and you don't want help, and that you can communicate that as well. Um, so it, I think it's important to um, to be able to um, to communicate that as well. So we're going to move on to the the next slide. Um, talking to children. Um, so um, this one I, I just wanted to include, um, you know, I'm not sure how many parents we have um, on here. Actually, before we get started, I, um, Deborah said um, that she's um, been known to use her cognitive issues to um, her advantage. We make a joke out of it now. I pull the MS card when it's in my favor. Humor is always um, helpful, it helps everything a little bit. And um, it makes everything go down a little bit easier. And I do think that there, um, that is a, a great, um, a great way to look at it too. Is that um, sometimes we just have to be able to laugh. And um, I, I can play an awesome game of um, game of charades when I'm trying to come up with a word. I can describe everything about it, but the word. Um, and and so I, I try to to make light of it too sometimes. Um, but thank you for sharing that, Deborah, because the cognitive issues can feel so so heavy. And embarrassing that um, I think it's okay to normalize um, some of it sometimes or see the lightness in it, even though it's it's a frustrating thing. So with talking with your children, um, with kids, you know, as kids grow up, um, their need to know things, you know, um, and their needs for information change. Um, you know, um, when children are young, there um, there's really some great books um, about MS. There's also um, you could have like a family meeting or um, or take your um, child to MS um, activities. Um, I know that when my son was young, I would take him to MS walks. Um, and I used to work at the MS Society. And so I would take him to a lot of events. And that helped um, for him to see people collectively with MS, not just his mom. Um, but whatever your strategy is, is it just children or grandchildren? Um, and when they have questions, to be able to answer them, even if you don't know the answer. Um, you know, and so um, if, if, for example, um, you know, if my son, um, he's, he's much older now, but when he was younger, if he would have asked me, um, you know, would I be in a wheelchair, I, I would say, I don't know, because at that time, I really didn't know if, if I would um, need a wheelchair. And at this point, I haven't, but, um, but at that time, it's, it's better to be honest. Um, and, um, and with talking with children, it's also important for them to know that they can't catch MS from you. Um, I, um, you know, I have, um, my son is older now, so I can, you know, I have, I'm honest with him that, you know, autoimmune is, you know, something that can be um, within our family, um, that we have um, people with an autoimmune predisposition, but, um, but that he can't catch MS from me and, um, and to make sure that he feels safe. So I just wanted to mention um, talking to children. So we're gonna move on to um, fostering and building your emotional support team. And we're gonna move to the next slide. Um, this is a slide that I've used in the past and I want to repeat just real quick. What does support look like to you? Can you identify this? How can you communicate this? 
And how um, can um, the people that care about you find out about this? And so I want you just to think of those questions, um, go back and, um, and, and consider, you know, like how can I um, identify what support looks like to me and how can I communicate this? Now we're gonna move on to the next slide. I feel like I'm going so fast, I, um, I apologize. We have a little bit more to go through. Asking for help. So um, this is a, a really good thing to know how to communicate. So, um, you know, getting and giving help is, um, is an important part, um, but, um, but sometimes asking for help can be difficult. And, um, and so some of the suggestions on asking for help is to be very clear in your ask. So, um, and, and to try to remove feeling bad about asking for help, because often people don't mind helping. Um, I will give you an example. I have a friend, um, a very good friend, that um, had a situation where um, she was having to be a caregiver for a while, and, um, and she called me and she said, um, could you bring me dinner? And be, just her asking was so great. It gave me purpose. It was specific. Did I make dinner? No, I have MS and I'm tired. I, I picked up dinner and I dropped it off. And so um, that's just a little example, but it was specific, it was easy, and, um, and I didn't mind doing it. Um, but, it but it's important to be specific, um, and, and often when we can do that, that might yield um, more positive results. Um, and um, so asking for help. I want to encourage you, if you have things that you need help with, that you, um, that you develop a specific request and you ask. Um, we're going to move on to accepting help. This can be hard um, sometimes, um, you know, to, one, to, um, to accept help. Um, we might feel like, well, we, you know, I, I can't believe I need to, you know, um, some people have, have, you know, said in, in sessions before, I, you know, I, I feel guilty accepting help. I, I, you know, I feel like I should be able to do this on my own, et cetera. Um, and then we have the situation where people might say, how can I help you? And, and often um, the answer is, you know, I don't really know. Um, or, um, you know, I, I have no idea because it's an overwhelming question to receive. So, um, so being prepared to accept help by having a specific answer. For example, it would be great if um, if we could go to lunch next week. I've been kind of lonely and I haven't been able to hang out with anyone. Or um, let's see, let me think of another one. Um, is there any way that you can help take the garbage out um, to, or take the garbage to the curb for me? Um, I, I can't lift it. It's a very specific thing. Um, and um, and it and it will encourage my neighbor or somebody that is asking if they can do anything. It gives them a, a purpose. People really do like being helpful, and um, and they do like to assist people. Um, so you are giving some purpose. So if someone's asking if you need help, and you need help, maybe having a specific thing that they could help you with. So um, we're going to move on to strengthening your relationships with good communication. So the first one, we'll move to the next slide, is um, telling others how, um, how they can help. Um, most friends or family um, really do want to help, and they just don't know how. And, um, and so it's, it's good to know um, exactly um, you know, how, how can people help you, having a list of things. Um, and so we'll move on to the next slide. So another thing we can do is manage expectations. This is a, um, an important part of um, strengthening your relationship with good communication. So one is asking for help. The second one is managing expectations. Understanding that your condition um, affects other people in your life too. Um, you know, I would be remiss to say that um, you know, absolutely my MS affects um, my husband because he does a lot of more um, things with my son in the mornings because mornings are hard for me. And, um, and so um, while 
while my symptoms can um, can cause some um, some changes for him, it's important to know that he's you know he's had to make adjustments as well too. Um, you know, don't be afraid to let your family know what you can and what you can't do. Um, and and this is important too because sometimes you know family members or people that love you might assume that you can't do something. L letting them know, um, you know, you might not be able to go on a, a long hike. But you might still be able to go on a family beach vacation, especially if it's in the um, in the fall. Setting clear boundaries. So we'll move on to the next slide. Boundaries are, you know, I've talked about this before in the past, and that's, I'm not going to talk a lot about it. But boundaries are, you know, there to um, to help um, protect um, us and our relationships. Um, but they're really important um, when we have a chronic condition. So, um, you know, boundaries involve like setting limits um, and communicating. And um, and so, you know, getting, um, you know, being really clear about what you um, can and you can't do. Um, and, and that means in all realms, like mentally, physically, emotionally, socially, et cetera. And once you have an awareness of your own boundaries, um, it's, a, it's more comfortable to be able to communicate that to others. And then giving yourself permission to uphold boundaries. Our next slide. Um, when you're living with, um, you know, with MS, um, you might um, have to advocate for yourself and practice self-care. Don't worry about um, how others might react um, or what people might think. Um, giving yourself permission to take care of you. Your care is your responsibility. Boundaries are not meant to punish others. They're meant to support your well-being. Very important there. And then um, being clear, direct, and respectful. Um, effective communication um, requires you to be clear, direct, and respectful. Um, you can um, firmly have boundaries without being rude. And, um, and it, the more clear that we can be and the more direct that we can be, um, the easier communication is. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, go to um, a couple slides away to the spoon theory because I do not want to miss the, talking about the spoon theory. So I'm going to go forward. Two more slides. Perfect. So, um, so Erica was really great about mentioning the spoon theory. And I hope many of you know about this. If you don't know about this, I want you to Google it um, later. And, and I normally don't promote Googling. But if you Google what is the spoon theory, you will um, be able to get all the information on it. But uh, essentially what this is, um, it's a really great communication tool. Um, it was developed by somebody that had lupus, and, um, and she found a way to uh, communicate her energy and, um, and how she spends energy and how she saves energy. And so um, one way that she was able to do this is by developing the spin theory. Um, and so um, it was a metaphor um, for energy. So for her example, she had 12 spoons. And then she showed that um, by doing certain activities or throughout the um, – the day, um, et cetera, how, um, how it spent her spoons down and that she, you know, would end up with, you know, a lot less spoons um, at the end of the day. Um, and, um, and sometimes, you know, getting up, getting ready in the morning or something, that might take, you know, two spoons for me, but, um, but for someone like my son, that might take none. Um, for my husband, it might just take one. So, um, so that's, it's a really great visual for people to, um, to see some of the differences in, in energy. And this is, you know, um, not just, you know, physical energy, but it, it can, um, it's, I think it can be helpful with um, explaining with pain and also um, emotional energy as well. So I encourage you, if you are not familiar with the spoon theory, to look it up. It's a really, really great um, very, very much so a great um, thing to know because it can really help to explain. Oh, I love this. Um, let me see who wrote this. Okay, Erica said, I have a friend that comes over um, to hang out with me and she helps me with the laundry. Um, it's so nice um, and there's no pressure. I, I love that. Um, Audrey says, um, she's got someone who supports her of her limitations um it's, it's appreciated but and but embarrassed um i hope over time that um that um we you can lessen the um the feeling of embarrassment and um dion said it was much easier to talk with my children because they have lived with it for the majority of their life um and and that is um a very good perspective um 
And so um, I wanted to get to address really fast. Um, we had someone earlier that said, you know, how do I explain um, that I'm not the same um, as they remembered me? And so um, I think, you know, some ways that um, to explain that might be um, one to explain the some of the ways that you are the same still, because MS doesn't change everything. Um, it changes, um, you know, some things, but it doesn't change everything. Um, and then. Um, and then I think it's helpful to provide education and information on MS in general and, um, and explain how sometimes how the disease can change things, but that you're still the person that you are, um, that you still um, have, um, you know, aspects of your life, hopefully, that are the same. Um, and, um, and that also that, you know, day, you know, day to day can be a little bit different. Um, but but I think it's okay to to be honest about you know how some of MS might might have changed some things for you, but that also that MS hasn't changed everything. Um, so we are almost done. Um, I really appreciate um, all of your patience. I know it's been um, the room is kind of dark in here today, and I've been going through a lot of this information very quickly. I am so impressed to everybody's participation. You guys have been amazing. Um, you have given um, some really good perspectives and strategies and tools for one another. Um, so again, I wanna thank um, Bristol Myers Squibb for their um, sponsorship tonight, as well as MS Views and News, because without them, this program would not be possible. And so with that said, um, my last slide, I keep it the same always. Um, I say um, it's not goodbye, that I'm gonna see you later. And, um, and that's the truth. So I hope that um, you will join in on the next MS Mental Wellness Chat, and I look forward to seeing you um, there, and thank you, and I wish you guys all a beautiful evening. Thank you.